Good evening. Community Board 8 speaks, talks about the issues facing Community Board 8. We have a series going on now which focuses on the committees of the Community Board. These committees do virtually all the work for the Community Board and they air the issues and, and go through the processes of listening to what has to go before the community and express opinions or make recommendations. It's an agency of the government, but actually it's an agency that's staffed by volunteers. We have two of these people who uh, spent many years working on the community board, and they're actually the co-chairs of the Environment and Sanitation Committee, Jackie Ludoff and Dave Kleckner. Good evening, Monica. Okay. Thanks for coming tonight, and I'm very thrilled that you could come in and share with the, the, um, the audience what you do. So could you tell us a bit about the Environment and Sanitation Committee? What, what are you what are you involved with? What are your issues? Well, our issues are uh, the environment and actual sanitation issues, but uh, I can tell you a little bit more of the history, which is kind of interesting. We were called, originally we started as the HESS Committee, which was Health, Environment, Sanitation, and Senior, senior Services, I guess. And um, what happened is so we, I got involved probably around 9-11. We had a lot of issues that we really couldn't handle, like whether or not we should close Indian uh, Point nuclear facility. Well, how does the community board have enough information to decide to do that? And other issues like that. And then what happened along came the 91st Street transfer station. And we had so many people coming to those meetings, so many people who were trying to find out what that was about, mm -hmm. that we ended up splitting off the environment and sanitation from the health and senior services. So that was kind of the beginning of the committee as I know it. And that transfer station is for, for garbage. Um, folks who may not know it. And it's still an ongoing issue. Yes, yeah, it ongoing is. Issue. That's been going on for a couple of years. And oh, about five, six years now. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, are there a lot of, um, is that a, a constant issue you're working with, or does that, are there other issues that are important to your committee right now? There are other issues, um, mm -hmm. and that one uh, continues on. Um, most recently, a few months back, uh, we uh, develop a uh, resolution, which um, our committee passed, and then uh, the full board voted on it and passed it, um, and it was submitted as testimony in advance of a um, Army Corps of Engineers uh, public hearing. Uh, it was held in the spring, because um, there's still various um, oversight uh, actions that would need to take place before um, the, the transfer station uh, might proceed. Mm -hmm. And the community board is, is um, passed resolution in the past, back in 2005, I think maybe it was the first mm -hmm. time, um, stating you know, many of what I think people feel are fairly obvious concerns of citing a, a large garbage transfer station in a smack in the middle of a residential community, um, which happens to also be abutting the uh, Asphalt Green Sports uh, Complex and Recreation Center, um, with the access road uh, actually cutting right past the, uh, the, the field there, um, and in a community where a residential population is, is growing and growing. Um, so there have been many concerns voiced by the community throughout the years. Um, what we did for the Army Corps of Engineer hearing is focus on issues uh, pertinent to the, the Army Corps of Engineers. So for example, um, uh, highlighting that the, uh, the proposed location um, is in a, a flood hazard zone. Um, it's also uh, within a short distance of this uh, an earthquake fault line that runs across 125th Street. And um, there have been projections from seismologists that uh, a, a fairly significant earthquake could occur there and that there have been tremors there in the past. So things of that sort um, we highlighted for the Army Corps of Engineers. So that, that remains an issue, and um, we certainly work on, on other areas uh, as well, large and small. <laughs> well, what are kind of the small issues that come up before your committee? Well, um, we, we, David has been very instrumental in starting some... Um, small community group meetings whereby we had people meet and discuss some of the environmental issues they would like to pursue further. And then we also had a, with the um, housing committee, we had a home housing safety committee meeting where we were told, you know, like what kind of products you should be using to clean with and uh, other environmental issues for your own home. And I'm um, trying to think of other smaller issues. We've been involved with pretty much three major issues, the Marine Transfer Station, the replacement garage at 73rd and um, FDR Drive, FDR Drive, Drive, right, and then the third water main tunnel. You know, the third water main has been in construction for I don't know, 50 years, 60 years, long time, mm -hmm. and now they're completing it, but in order to complete it, they have to connect the, wa the main water main to, um, you know, the various, I forget what you call them exactly, but 
in yeah, good the, shape. The, the cedars? The yeah, ones right, right. Off. Yeah. But first of all, they had to put in a, a vent. Mm -hmm. So the vent is being installed right now on 59th and 1st. Mm. And it's taken, it takes a long time to get the community to agree on where these things should be done. You know, nobody wants them in their backyard, the nimbyism of everything. But uh, finally it was agreed there was 9D, 59th and 1st. So been constructing that now for a couple of years and the shaft is almost done. Now they have to put in the actual construction of the shaft is done. What they have to put in now is they have to put in kind of the guts, the mechanics, the wires, the tubing that will actually make it work. Mm -hmm. So then they'll be able to go and shut it off from this um, from this vent on 59th and 1st and then they're going to install the water mains. So that's all these projects are really kind of long and extensive. And is that vent? Is that for the construction of the water main, or is that a, a, a permanent part of the water main? It will main? be a permanent part. The construction is what the community really is concerned about, because that's mm -hmm. the most evasive in terms of community. Mm -hmm. But the actual, um, once it's installed and once it's ready, it goes in operation, the community will hardly notice it's there. Mm -hmm. So it's just the construction that's causing a lot of problems. I think you know, from the community um, perspective, you know, we, we have these very large infrastructure projects, and we can go back to talk about some of the small projects too, but they're, they're obviously uh, projects of importance to the city. Um, we need a third water tunnel for the city. The, um, the, the, the reason Florida folks aren't, aren't familiar is there's two water tunnels right now and they, they leak millions of gallons of, of uh, fresh drinking water. The city can't go in and repair them because then there wouldn't be water flowing into the city. So they need mm -hmm. the third water tunnel so that they can close, the city can close down uh, a water tunnel to do necessary repairs uh, while bringing fresh water uninterrupted into the city. So it's obviously an important project for the city that the community board doesn't want to get in the way of, but at the same time, um, on the local community level, um, a project like this, of course, is going to have um, potentially major impacts uh, to people uh, living nearby during the, the construction phase, mm -hmm. um, from noise impacts from con uh, construction to traffic impacts. Um, mm -hmm. The, uh, the, the construction works going on near the 59th Street Bridge, and so there's, there's those types of concerns. And likewise, likewise with the Marine Transfer Station, I don't think anyone at Community Board 8, um, for the most part, is saying there shouldn't be uh, marine transfer stations. They're very important for the city's trash management system um, in terms of uh, both environmental benefits and, and keeping trucks off the roads and traffic benefits of keeping the trucks off the roads. Um, but the question is, where should these facilities be? We, we argue that it should be in an industrial neighborhood. Um, it shouldn't be in any, in any residential community, whether it be an upper income or, or a low income uh, community. Um, and likewise, uh, Jackie mentioned a sanitation garage, um, which may seem kind of like a routine sort of thing, mm -hmm. but a, a garage is being rebuilt and it's going to be 17 stories high. And so people who live nearby raise issues um, pertaining to uh, light and views and, and, and noise and things of that sort. So, so these projects do have uh, definite impacts and, and we try to keep the community apprised of what's going on um, by holding regular meetings and public officials come in and, and keep us abreast of things that are happening, have happened or going to happen, what the timetable is. Um, and we encourage people to come out to the community board meetings to, to keep informed. Uh, we, we do a lot of work to, to publicize the meetings um, public notice to make sure people uh, oh, are, Thank you are aware. For, for mentioning that because when each program we're always telling people you can see where these um, committees, um, the schedule for the committees is on the uh, website which is right. cb8m.com. Right. Right. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so that's it has the, the, the calendar for not just your committee but right. all the committees. Um, Jack, you'd mentioned about working with some of the other committees. What, when, when your committee does interact with um, the other committees, what type of interactions are these? Well, we did, issues? we did interact with other committees in the rodent problem, mm -hmm. which was the safety committee. And, um, you know, we kind of coordinate who's going to come and speak, what mm -hmm. the format of the meeting is going to be like, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of um, things we're going to have to present, uh, what kind of, you know, like um, graphs and charts and that kind of stuff. And so, could you, before you continue, I talk a little bit about that, the rodent um, form that you had, because right. that was a very important one. Right, right. We, we called it rodents on the run. Right. <laughs> um, how to combat pests and other vermin. We were trying to come mm -hmm. up with something catchy. Uh, you had asked earlier, you know, about kind of uh, what are the, some of the small, smaller mm -hmm. issues. Maybe this is something you could view as a smaller issue. Um, mm -hmm. 
in terms of it's, it's not a big, large infrastructure right. project, but yeah. to people who are impacted yeah. by rodents, um, and I think uh, probably most people in the city uh, have some one. have some <laughs> have seen a rodent and have some concerns. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an important issue. Yeah. And, uh, and that forum also talked not just there is a problem, but what can you do at right. your home, yeah. too? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest uh, comment made, the comment we all have to keep in mind is as long as you don't have any garbage around, any empty, any water around, or any, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you keep your trash, keep your kitchen clean, keep your trash put away at all times, and then, you know, if everyone has nothing to eat, he's probably not going to spend a lot of time in your environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we had three, three speakers, uh, some from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene from the city, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the Doe Fund, and Mount Sinai, and that, that really was the, the theme that, that, that prevention, um, mm -hmm. you know, in this case, really is, is worth a pound of cure. It's, it's, it's very, very difficult to eradicate a rodent problem or um, any kind of vermin, cockroaches, or, or anything mm -hmm. of that sort. Once uh, once it, it invades your home or your nearby park. Um, mm. But prevention and, and some things that were suggested were just kind of simple things that maybe you don't think about. Um, not leaving your pet food uh, yeah, out for your, right, your yeah. cat overnight. Uh, right, yeah. we, we have a cat at home mm. and uh, that was something that, you know, we haven't had a pest problem, but it's something that we, we uh, realized that we were doing. We mm -hmm. leave the, the cat yeah. food out during the night and so. Um, it's something to, to think well, about. Getting back to, to the other committees, because that was that was a forum you ran with another committee. Right. Correct. Right. Now, what, what other committee. committees do you do you have? Well, we did the housing district? committee the, that we mentioned before, mm -hmm. the the home safety and environmental impact committee about what you can do to keep your house, you know, safe environmentally. Mm -hmm. Um, what other committees have we met with? I think that's kind Past of it. year, those were the two that we, yeah, we, we yeah. collaborated but, with directly. Yeah. But, you know, the vermin problem ends up to be something that continues on and on. We constantly have people meet about their block. And what they're talking about, for the most part, I think a lot of people can deal with in their own personal home, especially in community board aid area, because, you know, it happens usually when the weather changes, it gets cold. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't keep your dog food out, and you make sure the holes in your house are covered over, you don't have any place for them to get in and you don't have food out, then it's probably okay. But there's a lot of concern about what's going on in the street. That seems to be the big issue that keeps popping up in the street, in the parks, what to do. So it's not really a personal issue. It really is kind of a city issue, a block issue, a neighborhood issue to get the stores to bring in their garbage, to you know, not have pockets of water from sewers overflowing and things like that. And one thing we've done as a community board is when um, particular problem areas uh, come to our attention, uh, we, we notify the appropriate folks about it. So, for example, at, at this rodents forum, um, someone from the Department of Health was there and, and followed up. There were um, a, a couple of locations in particular that, that people were complaining about um, with rodent infestation outdoors, and um, they followed up in Rupert Park um, and uh, in the East 60s at another location, mm -hmm. and they've encouraged us to, you know, let the, the folks in the city know when, when there's um, a problem. And, and what, what people mm -hmm. in the neighborhood should do is they can call 311 um, if there's a, a rodent concern, outdoor rodent, con rodent concern in a, in a neighborhood park. Mm -hmm. And um, sanitation department or health department or whatever the appropriate agency uh, uh, will, will likely respond. Um, and they can also contact the community board. And um, the, I know the phone number is posted on, on the website that, that you had given. And, and people can, can, can inform the community board of, of hot spots, and we can, we can then work with the, the local uh, uh, officials to, to seek getting, getting problems addressed. Do you get, um, have other experts come in and work with your committee? You mentioned the, the Rhodes Forum where you had some public mm -hmm. um, uh, or, or some um, experts on. Are there right, other yeah. issues you bring in experts on? We have uh, in the uh, third water main, 33 uh, B, the shaft project. We have people from DEC come all the time to talk to us, right? Uh, that would be DP, I think, the next the Department right. of Environmental Protection. Environment Protection yeah. right. mm -hmm. And then um, with the, uh, with the uh, third, with the Marine Transfer Station, the a local uh, developer has, who owns several apartments in the area always has, he, they've, he's hired professionals who really come and, and testify in these various meetings that we've had public meetings. So, um, yeah, we always call, and we certainly for the garage on 63rd Street, we have somebody from the sanitation department come all the time. Matter of fact, at our last meeting, he was the one who told us that they come mm -hmm. in the community board all the time. So if people call 311 and they don't get a response to their rodent problem, then he has people come in 
all the time. We should just give them the information. They will follow through on it. So. Mm -hmm. And in that vein, too, you know, we've also done, in terms of bringing in experts, um, we, we held a meeting, we called it a stakeholders meeting, um, where um, we invited um, folks from a broad area of expertise to, to come together with us. Um, and that's in recognizing that we don't, we don't know all the answers um, as, as members of a community board. We don't know all the questions uh, to ask, uh, for, for that matter. Um, as you, you mentioned, we're volunteers. We, uh, most part, everyone has busy lives. We have our our jobs and our families and um, our, our other activities. Uh, two crazy members of the community board even uh, ran the New York City Marathon and trained for that. Uh, <laughs> your husband being one of them, <laughs> me being the other. Uh, so, so people are, are busy and, and we're not experts in, in, in all areas. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we, we convened a meeting uh, in the spring where we invited uh, a very wide, diverse net as we could cast a group of folks, about 50, uh, different uh, people from environmental advocacy organizations, mm -hmm. uh, local government agencies, academia, hospitals, business uh, improvement districts, uh, 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 I'm trying to think uh, where else, but a whole mm -hmm. broad spectrum of, of, of stakeholders to tell us, well, what, what do you see as the, the priorities um, in, in our community to district on sanitation and the environment? and how do you think we can help work with you and, and work on these issues to, to help resolve them? And are we going in the right direction? So through that kind of approach, we're, we seek guidance and input and, and feedback mm -hmm. that, that helps uh, to direct us. And we plan to continue doing that in the future as well. One, one thing that I think it should bring up, it's interesting, is that lately with the sanitation department and with the DEP people, they both told us that they have a budget problem. As we know, there's a major budget crisis in this country and in the city of New York. And they said that some things like the third water tunnel may not be completed when they expect it because it's not an emergency project. It's not a project where they have to construct this third water tunnel. They're doing it for convenience and for to be able to, you know, take care of the other two tunnels. But therefore, they are delayed and they're not really sure when they'll get the funding from some of these capital programs. And the same thing with the replacement garage at 73rd Street. They have torn down the garage, so they have the contract to do the demolition. But it's not going to be until 2012 that they start the construction of the project, again, because of financial concerns. So it'll be interesting to see what these financial concerns do with some of the capital projects that the community board is looking to see progress. Um, you'd mentioned about, you know, not being an expert and calling in experts. Well, getting on this committee of environment sanitation, do you have any background in these areas or... Um, you know, how did you get involved in this committee? And actually, in addition to answering that question, how did you get involved in the community board to begin with? So why don't we start with you, Jackie? Oh, well, yeah. funny community board. Yeah. I probably have a different answer than most people do because I was a friend or acquaintance of an elected official. And these pe I, we were talking about the community board, and I said, yeah, you know, I might like to be interested in doing it. And all of a sudden, one day I get this letter, congratulations, you're on the community board. And I said, what? So I called up this elected official. I said, did you get my name? They said, well, yeah, don't you want to do it? I said, well, well, yeah, I do. I just never applied. I didn't expect to just get on it. So that's how I got on it. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the committee, I've just been on the board for a long time, and I think there was just a vacancy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that happens as chair. You just ask somebody if they would like to take on this committee. But I certainly have no expertise in the matter mm -hmm. of sanitation, of environment and sanitation. What about you, Dave? Um, well, I was appointed much more recently um, to what is a much more rigorous process these days. <laughs> that, <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> um, when uh, Manhattan Borough President Scott Stringer uh, took office, he followed through on a, a campaign pledge um, that he would pay a, a close attention to community boards and the whole process of, of how folks get appointed and um, uh, holding community boards accountable and, and um, watching out for conflicts of interest and, and things of that sort. So I guess I'm, I'm more in that era. <laughs> and um, my early involvement was uh, I moved with my family um, from lower Manhattan, uh, way down south, to the, uh, the great north of uh, the Upper East Side. And when, when we moved here uh, back in 2002, uh, I wanted to learn what was going on in, in this community <laughs> that we moved uh, into mm -hmm. suddenly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I would read Our Town, uh, the local newspaper, but um, I, I, I wanted to learn more. And, and I started to go to community board meetings. I, I discovered there was uh, these meetings that we could just go to and find out all these great things, interesting mm -hmm. things, uh, uh, annoying things that were going on in our community. Mm -hmm. 
And I found it very compelling uh, to, to, to come to meetings. And I, I continued to do that for oh, perhaps a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was uh, told that there was an opening for what's called a, a public member on one of the committees, the housing committee. And public members are different than full uh, appointed uh, board members in that um, uh, it, it's people have an interest in a certain area and, and will work with that committee, just that committee um, on that area. Um, uh, they don't have full voting rights with the board. They don't have the full responsibilities and obligations to go to all the, the board meetings. We have two mandatory meetings a month um, as community board members and uh, plus committee meetings that we go to. So it's a little lesser commitment and it's a way to kind of get your feet wet and, and see if, well, is this something I really want to get involved in? Because um, uh, and I think as the, the board president really wants is, is for folks who end up on the community board to know what they're getting into and be fully dedicated. and and responsible contributing members to the board. So um, I guess after being on the housing committee for about a year, it didn't, it didn't scare me off. And so I applied and went through the whole interview process um, with the, the borough president's office. And, and how'd you get into the environment and sanitation? And was appointed. And then um, environment and sanitation, I, I didn't join the, onto the committee right away, but I did start going um, because I do have, have some degree of, of uh, background in environment and sanitation. Um, I have a master's degree in uh, urban environmental policy, um, and I worked for uh, quite a few years for New York City's recycling program. So it's an area that, that I, I uh, have interest in background and, and, and mm -hmm. some knowledge in. And as well, I, you know, I was attending the meetings, and I, um, I liked, uh, they seemed interesting. I liked how Jackie was running them and wanted to get more involved. And our current uh, community board chair of the, the full community board, um, Dave Liston, one of his uh, uh, things that he feels is important that I think we, we agree with, um, all of us, is that um, it, it's, it's best, the, the committee system works best if they're co-chairs rather than one chair. And, and Jackie was kind of out there all by herself running the committee and doing a great job with it. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's difficult when you're the one running all the meetings, taking all the notes, um, you know, reporting the minutes back, uh, mm -hmm. doing all the logistical work. And um, if you can share that and bounce ideas off mm -hmm. another person, um, I think it, it, it's helpful. And so. Uh, uh, not just this committee, but all the committees. Um, uh, uh, Dave Liston, our, our chair, has sought to to have uh, co-chairs uh, mm -hmm. uh, running them. So when he began encouraging folks to to fill vacant co-chair mm -hmm. spots, uh, mm -hmm. I um, offered and, and said I'd, I'd be interested in co-chairing with Jackie and. Um, Jackie uh, gave it some thought and decided, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, in addition <laughs> to being the co-chair of, of this so committee, Jackie, you're together. now you're going to be taking on the position of being the chair of the full community right. board eight. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank yes. you. And uh, so um, we want to just spend a couple minutes uh, on uh, just on that position. Have you given any thought about what you um, might want to accomplish as the chair of the community board? Well, one, I'd like to understand how it works myself. That's number one. I think, um, you know, our district manager left a while ago, and so we have a new district manager, somebody who's worked for the board for many years. We're quite lucky that she wanted to become district manager as, as assistant manager or associate manager. So I would like to see how the board office works. I think we have to make sure that that's ship shape and everything's going well there. I think primary focus is basically on our full board meeting and all the committees that kind of add up to it. And the same thing is, as Dave said, we meet twice a month with a full, where everyone has to come, where the full board is expected to be a member of the committee. And so it's also for the land use meeting that I would like to see how. So I think those are the focuses of the, of the community board, and it's like how the committees are hierarchied up to, re, to manage those two meetings. And then I think there's just you have to look at the committees, as Dave said, and who's running them, and are they the perfect right people, and um, what are you doing? Are you doing enough? Are you doing too much? Um, I think there are a lot of issues, but you know, never having been, a, I've been on the board for 30 years, and it seems like you just can fall right into it, but I think that mm -hmm. I have a lot of learning to do about the process and how things work. One of the things I think happens a lot, though, is that in many of the committee meetings, issues are brought up, and you know, I would like to see a kind of a more of a follow-up agenda whereby people put at the end of the agenda things to follow up on so that the board office can pick up on them and follow up. Sometimes we say, you know, we'll call somebody and they'll get back to us and we kind of forget about it and they never call and we kind of drop it and we're kind of lucky because people don't usually come and hold us accountable for that. But I think that's what we have to do a lot of, a lot more following up on mm -hmm. different items that are brought up in committees. And um, 
you know, it, as I said before, with the whole financial situation, I think it's going to be a interesting year, a very difficult year. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens, what kind of things we have to address. You actually answered my next question, I think, which was what will be the biggest challenge facing Community Board 8 in this coming year? And you've mentioned the, the budget issues. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would be? Well, I think you'll do two one? things. One, mm -hmm. probably a lot of applications that may have come through to us may not proceed because of the fact that they don't have the funds to follow through on some things. And then on the other hand, I think, you know, fortunately, I'm so glad we don't do budget issues in our community board. I don't think any of us have the expert. Well, we do budget issues for the board itself. And we do our suggestions for our major budget, budget issues for the city, but we don't really decide what's to be cut and what's not to be cut, thank goodness. Uh, so, But I, I think that that's going to have ramifications for the community board, not only on our own board budget, because we have a board budget, and they tend to cut, um, I think there was a 5% cut in 2008. It's going to be a 5% cut in 2009, so mm -hmm. we'll have to jiggle money. And Whereas we had a district manager, an associate district manager, and two other... Um, associate managers, uh, we're not going to be able to afford the fourth person any longer. So, have to decide, you know, how the office can function without that person. What do we have to do? Do we have to get board members to help out? Do we have to get people from the community to help out? I don't know. We'll have to work out a lot of those issues. And I think the budget problems are going to have an impact on the board. Well, um, just one last question would be, um, what's your hope for um, for the Upper East Side in Roosevelt Island and um, do, you, do you see us as um, uh, changing dramatically in the next few years? And what kind of things can the community board do to um, manage the change? Well, I think we have to be on top of all the issues. Um, I, you know, the, the mayor has put out his 2030 um, budget and agenda and plans sure. that he likes to see. Happen. Uh, again, I think the current fiscal crisis may have some impact on that. But I would like to see, you know, a greener neighborhood, more trees. I'd like to see us involved more in environmental issues. I would like not to see the marine transfer station go forward, but we'll have to see whether or not that happens or not. Well, I have to say we're all out of time, so thank you so much. And uh, please join us next month for Community Board 8 Speaks. Thank you. Thank you.